I'd like to tell you about a show of epic proportions. I prefer no me some magic broken. when I'm trying to get in and out of houses. Undetected. I prefer me some magic. A show where the boundaries are pushed. I like, uh, I like spam. Is there something wrong with that? No, nothing at all. I'm out. Meat with jelly on top of it. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'd like to tell you about that show, but that is not this show. This show is the 40th Slip with host Chris York. I have a tendency to go to dark places with my humor. It is what it is. Um, it's not going to change anytime soon. Co-host Steve Alcorn. It was so earth-shaking and, and mind-blowing that even John Teeter in the future knows about it. And reoccurring ever-present special guest Matt Knapp. Yeah, somebody should have put out like a giant bug zapper. And there's the end of that whole Mothman debacle. <laughs> a show that lacks taste, a filter, and listeners. Are you listening? Are you like hearing the fucking fart? <laughs> yeah. Not just smelling it, you're hearing you hearing Not the just smelling. Audible as well. That would be something else. Oh. But you well, I do. Marks that you can't tell if it was you or not. Well, yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> What you are about to hear may be offensive, but we don't really give a fuck. Good evening, and welcome to the Fortean Slip. I'm jacked up on coffee. It's not Sasquatch coffee, by the way, Matt. Did I tell you that no. every morning I get up and I traverse across the United States via uh, Gateway, which is a teleporter, um, to piss in Phil Poling's coffee pot? Really? Yes. Um, it's what he doesn't understand is it's what gives his coffee its unique flavor. <sighs> this is episode 48 of the 40 and slip. We are uh, sans Steve tonight. Um, I do believe Where's that Steve? I do believe that um, Steve, um, if any, you know, if anybody knows Steve and uh, it, it has been on his YouTube channel, Steve uh, got a VW bug recently. Um, it was the it, it was his first vehicle. Yeah, I, I believe so, or at least one he previously owned. Yeah, he owned it or some shit like that. Anyway, um, what what most people don't know about Steve, uh, with all his, you know, uh, idiosyncrasies. Um, he's eccentric. He likes to fuck automobiles. <clears throat> and wow. He has been waiting for the chance to fuck this Volkswagen for a really long time. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, but he can't... Uh, um, uh, I guess he cannot um, have intercourse with the automobile until he's able to start it. And if anyone, you know, has been paying attention to his channel the other day, I guess he was able to get the fucking thing running. So, well, I guess, I mean, I could play the part of Steve. Um, hey, I'm Steve Alcorn. I live in Pennsylvania. I like spam. I, I heard a UFO once. An action figure came to life on my floor. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, doorstop walked across the living room one time. Uh, so we are without Steve tonight, but this is episode 48. Um <clears throat> I see your slender man <laughs> and raise you a religious suicidal cult. Um, Pretty steep raise you got there. That's a fucking, that's a raise. That uh, is. These, uh, but I, I was, ta I, I didn't talk to you much about it. I just sent you like the, uh, the story, but these uh, slender man killings that are going on. Still, yeah, going like, on. This fucking, there's two, uh, what was it, like twelve year old girls in one state. We did the story on it a while back. I can't remember now. Right. 
And now there's this fucking teen or whatever in Florida who, like, had a journal and was saying, like, shit was going to go down. And, you know, she gets pissed off and fucking burns the house down with her fucking mother and fucking siblings, like, in the house. Yeah. And uh, what was it that she used as a, uh, what's it called, a repellent? A uh, propellant or I'm actually see I'm I'm fucking ignorant because it was like bleach and rum soaked rags or towels or something. I'm popping up the story right now. Something really weird. It, it wasn't like gasoline on a rag. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say in this story that I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, you're right. It was bleach and rum. She's, uh, <laughs> what she's, kind of combination is that? Lily Marie Hartwell <laughs> allegedly soaked a towel and bedsheet with bleach and rum before setting them alight in the family's Port Ritchie property early Thursday morning. See, I can read the news better than Steve. <clears throat> I just don't well, fucking know. I, I don't understand that combination, though, of bleach and rum. Um, I, I believe Phil calls that drink a Sunday driver. Yeah. That's what, one to clear out the sinuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the soul, because it's going to leave the fucking body. <laughs> but, I, 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 you know, and as I said to you, you know, we were talking about what we were going to do the show about tonight, and I, I, I'm, I'm just blown away by these people who are willing to give give over their, you know, belief structure into these uh, fictional fairy fucking tales like Slender Man and, like, I was talking to you about the Heaven's Gate cult, you know? This yeah. this guy convinces all these people that, you know, fucking Hale Bob's bringing a fucking alien ship. We got to put a buck 25 or something in our pockets. We all got to be wearing Nikes or Keds or whatever the fuck they needed to put on their feet. Right. And we were like, all your own. I was just. Junior high ish age, maybe? I was high school at that point. What, that... What, what year did that happen? Oh, God. I want to say like 90. I want to say like 91, 92. That's my guess. Your guess. That's my guess. Um, 1997. Really? So we were both out of high school by then. It seems so long ago, though. It seemed like it happened in high school. Wow. I mean, people are listening to this. 1997 was long ago. Yeah. And they can fuck off. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? No, that was, that was like um, a really weird thing, you know? But the, uh, that but the, in our lifetime. But all and and it's it's stuff that happens, like not I won't say that it happens all the time. I mean, lately it's happening quite a fucking bit. But y you, many times throughout our history, we see these instances of people, you know, buying into belief structures, whether it's whether it's on their own, like this girl obviously did, and or those two, you know that that uh stabbed their other classmate but the, you know they were a team basically but th there wasn't any like right there wasn't any cult they just believed in something you know but then you They're get completely these completely fictional something right and then you've got these cults that that you know create these belief structures based around something like a fucking ufo showing up it just, uh, I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, I guess I, I get the, the idea that you want to belong to something, but wh where does it go to fucking, like, you know, burning your fucking family down in a fucking house? Why? How can you be brainwashed by someone else or yourself to the extent of where you're willing to either kill yourself or people around you? Oh, and Matt, I want you to know, she texted her mom an apology afterwards. Oh, that was nice of yeah. her. Because <clears throat> that makes it all better when you text that. Whenever she saw that the Slender Man didn't show up and make her beautiful. Yeah. The fucking, she was like, eh, the, maybe I should apologize. The, the tall octopus with legs. 
I love how this fucking thing yeah. looks with all those the waving fucking arms. It just reminds me of I a mean, fucking octopus. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the guy that created that story for a creepy pasta or whatever. Which don't get it confused to anybody listening. It is a completely fictional, made up story. Um, but I always thought like the just the overall character design was really lame. I mean, it seemed to like copy off of a lot of other characters in horror fiction. And like, where is a twelve foot tall, toothpick skinny, eight arm guy gonna find a suit jacket like that? I mean. He's got a really good tailor, Matt. Apparently so. He's, like, he's where got, does he get that? He's got a hell of a fucking tailor. And then, you know, that's all that's all we can tell you. When you become part of the Slender Man cult, you'll understand. Fantastic tailor. He's just amazing. There's a, a whole group of Koreans working for him. Oh, I've been... Oh. This is completely off subject, but for some reason it just popped in my head, and I know you're a reality fucking junkie, you fucking wacko. That's uh, right. Are you going to watch that fucking new show there? What is it, Utopia? Absolutely. Okay. I can't wait for All right. It. Now, see, this is one of those shows that pisses me the fuck off. All right? <laughs> and we totally just derailed off subject for a second, but I, I had to talk about this. This show pisses me off because you know goddamn well they didn't film these people for any length of time. Oh they, yes, they did. How long? <laughs> what is it? Like a year? A did year they, and a half? Did they seriously film them for a year and a half? No. Of yeah. course not. Fuck not. No. But that's the premise of the show. Yeah, that makes me so mad. Now, if they want to do a show like that, I would be on board with a show like that. They would get the people like me. If they would go out and film those fucking shows properly, go out and set people out to fucking have a fucking colony or whatever on their own, let them fucking have that. If fucking people die, fucking people die. That's the fucking way that it is. Let that fucking shit play out. That would be reality. <laughs> let that shit play out, and I would be glued to the fucking television screen. But, yeah, I saw that, and I'm like... Fucking, I said, Matt, well, this has got Matt Knapp written all oh, over it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I used to watch the one where they'd have, like, the different engineers and stuff and kind of a post-apocalyptic thing where they had to, like, you know, survive or whatever. Um, it was but, on, like, the Discovery Channel, I think. And, the, and that falls And they into had the to, like, build all these contraptions and stuff. And, like, people would, like, they, they you know, paid actors, of course, would play like you know a raiding camp that would come in and like steal all their food you know and things like that and it was pretty ridiculous and that plays but into kind of some of that it. that plays into some of like what we're talking about too yeah with the uh uh you know believing in some, the post-apocalyptic thing people like uh trying to fucking you know set set up fucking shelters and bunkers and shit and living out fucking you know in societies i was watching this one thing where this these people this business or something is selling like spots in this underground fucking like ark basically in case fucking shit goes to hell like, which can be completely defeated with somebody that happens to have a long garden hose that they can just like <laughs> put in the vent system like, come on out of there, fellas. Yeah, have fun. But yeah. yeah, all just how many times has the world ended during our lifetimes? I mean, a few. Somebody predicts the demise of civilization at least once a year. Hmm. What was it? Uh, twenty was it twenty thirteen? Was that when it was Ooh, supposed to Y2K. end? Y two K. Y two K. Remember Y two K? Oh, Y two K. I was I was working at fucking Walmart and like people like cleaned that fucking place out of batteries, candles, fucking everything. That on shit. the pretense that their computer would stop working. Right, like <laughs> everybody thought like the world was gonna come to a screeching fucking halt. Like, and do you I, think that might have been just like a big thing to sell more computers at the time? I 
I, I you had to go buy a new one, remember, that like was Y two K compatible and then have like the stickers on them and stuff. And... I, w- I would not put it past anybody. Like fucking the way marketing campaigns work. I wouldn't put it past fucking anybody. Well, because like I had a basic understanding of computers at the time. Right. And it's like I I was at least to the level where I knew that there wasn't like some little robot brain inside my computer. And, like, that was the whole thing. Like, these computers weren't programmed to go past a certain date. So whenever it hit that date, the clock would roll over to zero. And the computer wouldn't understand that and would just quit working. Right. It was, it was a, it basic, Basically, what they were saying was that the computers were going to crash. Right. That's, that's all it was, is that the computers were going to crash. They, they weren't going to be able to handle the rollover and that it would cause errors and the the amount of, like, breakdown within the system would be so much that... Catastrophic. Ev- that everything, the whole thing would collapse. The whole planet. <laughs> Which was fucking kind of funny. People couldn't just go back and reset the clock or whatever. Yeah, and and you know now I just and then we had the uh, the Mayan calendar that was a big one. Yeah, well, like I said, wasn't that twenty thirteen? Uh, I think so, like twelve, 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 or something like that. Oh no, t- 2012. 12, 23, 12 over yeah, something. Yeah, it was t- two thousand twelve. Well, that was going to be the end of the world, and then there was another guy who prophesied that there was going to be the end of the world, and people bought into his bullshit. But and 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 we've talked about this before too, Matt. And I know I've talked with uh, David Batdorf over at the uh, Squatchers Lounge podcast about this, and that is the fucking cult of Bigfoot. Oh yeah, the fucking the bullshit belief structure that goes along with that. The 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 fucking egos, just the just everything that goes along with it. And I had a I had a pretty detailed discussion with him one night about that and you know how it it becomes almost a fucking religion no it's not almost at this point it is yeah but uh, i mean because you can take you know technically the definition of like a church is like a place of worship or whatever so you could say the facebook group pages are the church and you know they meet on these pages and they you know, share fellowship where they express their same beliefs to one another. And and they share blurry pictures of nothing. Yeah, and, <laughs> and if you're not, and if you challenge that belief system or question it or even just don't accept it as your own, you're not welcome within their group. Yeah, like, and, they'll, and they'll kick you the fuck you're out. You're the enemy. Oh, yeah. yeah. With a vengeance. It, 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 and, I mean, I know um, Stroyfer, Stephen Stroyfer has a, huge ongoing feud with those people because his Facebook group is the exact opposite of that. Right. Anybody can come in and say what they want and he'll openly debate them. Right. I I don't, I don't know of him ever like seriously kicking anybody out for an open debate. No, no, not that I'm aware. Maybe for somebody Um, posting a sunglasses ad, but, (laughs) and I've, I've debated pretty heavily in that group. Um, and I've never been kicked out. And I usually, I'm usually pretty good at getting kicked out of groups. <laughs> and, and, and all, all, but all around, in a lot of these things, you you wind up with those that cultist mentality. That, but why does it always get to that point? You know, where? Well, I think you touched on it earlier. Um, I had actually written a paper about the problems of the Bigfoot community um, several years ago, 2007, I believe. And uh, I talked about how there were a lot of people involved in the Bigfoot community for the social aspect because they didn't have another way to fit in. Like, this was a way for them to connect with other people and to basically inflate their self-importance in life. So they had something outside of their normal mundane existence. And I think that's kind of turned into this Bigfoot cult thing. And I think the same thing happens 
across the board with the other groups. You've got people um, with low self-esteem or, you know, social issues or whatever, where they find these groups to fit in, and they just get carried away with it. They should be going and, like, playing bingo or something. <laughs> and And we both know people exactly like this. Yeah, everybody does. Everybody no, does. within yeah. with no, I mean within the Bigfoot community. Oh yeah, no, yeah. yeah. We, we you know we personally know people that are just exactly like that. That yeah. ha- that have you know interjected themselves in just for self importance. And that's it. That, that's all it amounts to. And, and, but it, it be, like I said, it becomes this you know cultish thing, and and you know while like in in that in the Bigfoot side of it i can't you know has anybody eventually is anybody killing anybody over that eventually yet? it will happen that's what i was gonna say oh okay eventually somebody will kill somebody over this topic i keep pushing buttons <laughs> <laughs> hey it was self-defense they came at me well i mean you know you could bring up Steven Stroford again, you know, his Bigfoot bookstore was shot at. Uh, yeah, Somebody that is, shot through the window of it. Yeah, that is true. Although, although some people tried to uh, say that it was the, that it was shot out, out from the inside or something like that. Yeah, when it happened, yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah. God. Now I'm not saying that was connected to anybody in the Bigfoot community. It could have been a drunk redneck driving down the road. For all I know. But I'm just saying, like, you know, eventually, yeah, I think it'll happen. Yeah. And 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 how many more how many more of these stories about fucking little girls because that's what it seems to be right now. I mean, I, I'm sure there's stories of, you know, young boys doing the same types of things for the um quote unquote slender man. Um <laughs> Well, those are different kinds of things. But uh yeah, exactly. Those are different kinds of boys. But I, I, they, I, I, how much more of this shit are we gonna see? Well, whenever we were kids, it was you know the the Dungeons and Dragons scare. Oh God, yeah. Oh my, they had a fucking sixty minutes episode on that shit. <laughs> yeah. Christ. Oh my. And they're God. pushing the you know the rock and roll music uh, angle a lot. But the difference is back then they were just taking kids that did fucked up things and saying like well oh well they were also interested in this this must be why they did it but these days the kids are saying that's why we did it which is really kind of jacked up and man i'm sorry but if you know any kid that played fucking dungeons and dragons like yeah they might have some pent up fucking anger inside but them motherfuckers ain't killing anybody no <laughs> No, they're like the least hostile people in the world. They just want to tell you about their fucking plus seven longsword. <laughs> That's <laughs> What's it. What's wrong with that? That's it. That, that fucking, they're going to throw a beanbag at you and say it's a fucking sleep spell. <laughs> they're, fucking, uh, they're wacky people. What's his name? Uh, Mike Rugg, the curator of uh, the Bigfoot Museum up there. Yeah. Um, he's a huge League of Legends player. No shit. No shit. I did not know that. I found that out today, being the, you know, Bigfoot crack reporter that I am. I've never played. Never, never played. Yeah, me. Have a, a lot of people do. Yeah, but, I've, I've, so I've, know. so I've heard. I, I used to work with a fucking kid at um, uh, the bus garage, um, and every night he would fucking come in. It was always a different video game. But he get, once he got on League of Legends, man, every night he had to tell me about his newest fucking character that he bought or was building up or fucking whatever. And I'm a I'm a video game guy. Like I grew up on Atari and Nintendo and then you know PlayStation and <clears throat> finally Xbox and PC. But I fucking could not deal with that on a daily basis. I was like fucking a dude. Like, this is, enough's enough. (laughs) I couldn't handle having a second life where one of them is a character in a video game. And and that's pretty much what goes on 
in a lot of those circumstances. I mean, the people live vicariously through the video game, and that's them, and they just play those games all the freaking time, man. Yeah, I, I got sucked in I st- back when I first found EverQuest. Fucking lost myself in EverQuest. Then EverQuest 2 came out, and it was the same. Nowadays, like... I, all I do, all I play now is I'll play a little World of Warcraft with my son, as far as the massive multiplayer shit, um, because he likes to play with me. But I try to keep it, you know, keep it to a minimum, and I like to play a lot more, a lot more strategy style games too. But it, it you yeah, know, but the, I mean, but when I know, ne- I know ne- the point where you're like noticing that your kid doesn't realize. That that is fake. No, see, but that's the thing. I talk to him about it all the time. Like, all the fucking time. Because I'm like, you know, I don't know. May, I, I don't buy into that shit. But maybe it's just because I'm a fucking parent and I think that I should. But I'm just like, you know, you know that stuff's, you know, like, not real. And, you know, when he's playing, like, Call of Duty. Because I'll let him play that shit. I don't, I don't care. It, like, I grew up on, on, on fucking Contra blasting fucking Russians and aliens, you know? Like, granted, the, the, the graphics weren't as good, but it was, you know, the content was all there. You know, but I'll ask him, and, you know, he's like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. But he's always excited to talk to me about his games and everything. So I, I'm not I'm not worried about it, and I don't think that's, a, that's the issue. I don't think that is what's driving our kids these days to do crazy shit i don't think it's the internet i don't think it's the guy who created the story no i I think it's just like it always has been where they're tying those things into it yeah now perhaps the kids are saying things to use it as an excuse oh oh most definitely most definitely no the 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 character of the slender man definitely had something to do with the children involved as far as their intentions what they you know there there was definite correlations there but as far as you know where they're going to take you know where this came from who's going to get blamed or what is going to get blamed and i think that is where we make the biggest mistake as a society no one wants to fucking blame the parents nobody wants to fucking go hey maybe the fucking parents didn't fucking do their job no because everybody's looking at it from the angle of well, what if my kid did this? I wouldn't want anybody blaming me. Yeah, and it's it's a ridiculous way to think because, you know, they're, they're just, you know, there are some horrid fucking parents out there. I, I, um, I, I was relayed a story just, um, just the other day about, uh, you know, from a woman who works at a, a daycare center. And she said, you know, that this kid, you know, came in and he was a fucking nightmare. Just a nightmare of a kid. And then later on in the, you know, when the parents came to pick him up, she recognized the father. And she had gone to school with him and he was a fucking nightmare in school. Like, but that's the thing, like, nobody... You know, nobody wants to hold the person who should be accountable accountable. Like, you know, nobody goes to the guy and says, hey, your son is acting up. Because nobody wants to hold the fucking parent accountable. Yeah. We want to blame. We want to blame everything on something else. Like, I'm sorry, but, it, you know, if my kid's fucking up, it's it's fucking part my fault, and it's part fucking my ex-wife's fault. And But somebody, somebody needs to be held accountable, and the kids need to understand, you know, that your actions have reciprocation. Yeah. Because otherwise, they grow up, and they do even more fucked up shit. And that goes into the whole fucking, this, this, uh whole nobody loses in the fucking sports league shit that they've started the fucking we all get a fucking trophy nobody fucking wins and nobody loses there's no consequence to anything anything 
So that's the way like, they're growing up. You got kids doing like we pulled pranks whenever we were kids. Oh fuck yeah! We, you know, like there's there's nothing wrong with that. But like, take for instance, you know, I, I saw you mention it earlier today on the internet that the you know Drew Carey helping find the teenagers for that ice bucket challenge, which is being called a prank. It's being called a prank, but a group of teenagers talked an autistic 14-year-old boy into taking the ice bucket challenge and then filled the bucket with urine and feces and spit and, <laughs> and then dumped it on the kid's head. That's fucking awful. That's not a prank. That's like taking things a little too far. That's fucking atrocious. <laughs> I mean, you know, like... They're picking on an autistic child. Wow. I, I always grew up where, you know, if there's something wrong with the person, whether it be a physical handicap, a mental handicap, whatever, they're kind of off limits. Yeah. They get a free pass on stuff like that. Yeah, I, but, I, 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 I yeah, I don't. I don't agree with that at all, but yeah, I, I, we all grew up doing stupid fucking pranks, and I think a lot of us doing that shit learned lessons. Like, yeah. Like, you do shit, and you have a consequence to it, and you learn the fucking lesson. Like, I can remember, like, being a young kid, throwing snowballs at cars in the winter. Perfect example. That one time that you nailed the fucking wrong guy's car and he comes fucking <laughs> running percussion. and he comes fucking <laughs> running into the woods after you. You know, that's it, it. But there's none of that anymore. And, you know, I I was talking with someone recently about, you know, what my life was like as a kid and what my kids lives are like now. Like when I was a kid at their age, I, I didn't even see my home after school. Like, I came, well, I saw it, I changed and left, <clears throat> and then came home at, like, fucking 9 o'clock at night. Right, that's yeah. how it was for me on the weekends, whenever we'd go to the lake house, I mean, it, but, I slept there, <laughs> you, know, you know, ate it, there. And was, and was anything any worse then? Is anything any better now? I, I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't, you know, I... But I, I definitely think that too much emphasis is stressed in the wrong areas when it comes to this shit. You know, when we're looking at at kids believing in this these fucked up things. I mean, obviously, there's been some strange fucked up things that have gone on. Columbine, you know, some of these other fucking issues with, you know, kids doing, you know, this Slender Man shit. I, I, there's all kinds of shit that's going on, and then we go into the other but stuff. But where do kids hear about this shit? How, how do they know? Like, okay, the the Slender Man incident. That's not just something that just happened to happen. The chances are that girl heard about the other girls doing it. Oh, you know, involved in the stabbing, and they publicize these stories all over the TV. You know, and and we don't know that for certain, but she definitely heard about this fucking thing from somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, but here here it goes back to this. Do we blame the fucking guy that, that created the story? No. No, you can't. Like, that'd be like <laughs> that'd be like saying fucking, you know, so two guys went out and stabbed each other with swords, so we're going to blame J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah. You know? It, it's just, it's just fucking ridiculous to me. And we need to, I think we need to stress, you know, the, the, our concern in the right areas, I guess, so that we're not, I, I still feel that it starts with the parents. Yeah. It starts at home. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's a, it's a family thing and it's, 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 a def it's learn about Slender Man is on the internet. You know, that that's where the stuff's posted. So be aware of what your kids are looking at on the internet. And we've said that before. I think we said that when we fucking talked about that 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 story before. 
Be aware yeah. what your kids are looking at on the internet. Here's, here's something that bugs the shit out of me with my kids. My fucking ex-wife got them both, you know, uh, at first it was iPods. Now my son's got a fucking iPhone 5. Like, total access to the internet at any fucking time that he wants. Like, there's no restrictions on that phone. Whatsoever. You know? And I constantly, all the time, am asking him, you know, like, what he's looking at, what he's checking into. You know, I'm trying to, you know, be nosy and not be nosy at the same time. Right. And, but it's just like, here's the problem for me. I'm, you know, I'm a divorced parent. You know, so my ex-wife has them for, you know, six of the seven days of the week. So six out of the seven days, they've got her rules. Right. You know, so what do, what does, what little I, what little input that I have, what does it matter to them? I mean, yeah, it does matter and it is important and I, you know, believe me, I don't give up on it. But... In the, the grand scheme of things, my kids are like, yeah, fuck you. You know, I'm, right. I'm going to go home and fucking watch whatever the fuck I want as soon as mom's <laughs> as back all kids is are, yeah. You know, like, oh, I can access anything, Dad? Yeah. Thanks for that. Info. Yeah, no shit, right? Wait until he finds porn. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. His life is over. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be Slenderman porn. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> uh, Maybe that's how he... In, you know, maybe that's the next big thing. Uh, Slender Man erotica. I, uh, uh, oh god, they they already have it. It's called fucking that fucking hentai anime <laughs> shit. <laughs> fucking like the the twenty two tentacled penis fucking monster. That's right, they do. Damn it. Where the where the, where, where the little Asian girls go? Ah ah. <laughs> Disturbing. It is fucking horrible. It's horrible. There's a guy arrested here um, just this past weekend for attempting to hire a 12-year-old prostitute. Holy fuck. Yeah. A a cop uh, posing as a 13-year-old prostitute. Wow. Uh, That's that's funny because I... Responded to him and set him up in a... Hotel room, he showed up. The deal was for $175, and the guy showed up at the motel room with $200 and a condom in his pocket. So, pretty busted on that one. Dude, I thought of, like, the best prank in the world to pull on somebody. Like, find out where the To Catch a Predator house is. (laughs) (laughs) And then, then, like, (laughs) fucking give him a box of condoms and some booze. Be like, yeah, no, no, just go right in. This chick is hot, man. <laughs> I'll meet you over there, man. Uh, hey, I'm running late. Just go on in. She said it's cool. Yeah, she <laughs> said it's cool. Everything's wonderful. Uh, f- <laughs> <laughs> this has been episode 48. I don't remember what I fucking called it. Something about I'll raise you something. I'll fucking figure it out later. I always forget this, but uh, if you like us, please click the like button. And I don't mean on Facebook, um, on YouTube. Subscribe, say hello, say fuck you, we don't care. Same result. Yeah. We bash everybody equally. Steve, we hope everything came out all right on the VW. I'm sure it looks like a big bleh.